shout out to our sponsors at IconBet. Open source, decentralized gaming, no deposits, play straight from your wallet. IconBet, made by the players, for the players. Ion Icon is proudly supported by Icon Nation and the Icon community. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Eye on Icon, the episode where we go around the ecosystem and bring you all the latest and greatest news. And with me, as always, Icon Graffo, how are you today? Doing pretty well, how about yourself? Yeah, I'm okay. I think uh, I've woken up angry, I've been telling you. <laughs> You've heard me grumble <laughs> a lot just before the podcast. But, and um, it's a green day, it's a green day too. Uh, yes. Usually that only that only happens to me on red days when I wake up. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah, yeah. I think um, I've, it's been a slow after effect of the red few days that we've had. I've actually uh, got the charts up now looking at ICX. Whew, okay. We've had a solid bounce. Yeah, so, uh, well, I think, I can't tell if this is like actually what happens, but it feels like this where it's like anytime ICX really starts to kind of outpace, you know, get some strength, start outpacing the market, feels like it's kind of, detaching a little bit um all of a sudden bitcoin like crashes and then just takes everything with it it did it did seem this time you know usually when like bitcoin drops you know it basically went from like 46 to 40 in i don't know what was that like a day or so if that and it seems like whenever that happens you know i expected because icx was in like the 170s or so and then that drop happened and i kind of expected to wake up and see icx at like 130 or 120 because it just feels like you know, Bitcoin drops, you know, 10%, ICX drops like 30% or something like that. Um, so the fact that it it held basically above one, I think it maybe dipped a little bit below 150, but it basically held within the 150s during that whole Bitcoin crash and all the kind of, you know, all the red in the market. And then, you know, it's rebounding kind of nicely. You know, it's in the mid 160s last time I checked. Um, and that's just with a bit of a bounce on Bitcoin. So hopefully, you know, once, the whole, ideally, you know, we start to get a run up in the market again, and we can start, you know, picking up picking up that momentum we kind of left off, and hopefully, you know, go back above two, and then uh, start going toward three. Hopefully, depending on how long this next kind of uh, the next the next series of green candles, uh, if they do come along, uh, does happen. So, hmm. um, nonetheless, I just it's it just feels ICX feels a little stronger now than it has in the past, especially during these types of crashes. Yeah, it definitely wasn't as brutal as some of the others. Um, but I mean, even now and looking at it, where that trend line, I think every time I've shown the charts, I've had this one line that has been from um, July uh, and we have bounced off it very every time, except for uh, in September, early September. But again, we shot straight back up above it. Um, and now we've literally come back and we've kind of, it hasn't it hasn't taken over uh, that trend line you know bounced above it it seems to have currently in the four hour charts hit the lower trend and kind of dropping again so let's hope you know we get one more big push to capture this and then smooth sailing but in general like you know i don't tend to get carried away with everyone tweeting you know oh btp uh, they're, they're, these are reasons um you know, I don't, I don't fall in that bucket. Uh, however, uh, there is a lot of stuff looming, pending. We still don't have dates, but it's it's happening. So um, that's probably one of the reasons why maybe the market has been not as brutal to to um, ICX holders. But time will tell. Well, it's also, you know, there's also so. I mean, I think the percentage of the stakes is so high. These, I think it's probably the highest it's ever been, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. um, just because everyone's using either ohm or balanced and doing so usually requires uh staking your icx in order to get those yields but also kind of what we were talking about last week where now there's you know people people need the icx in order to, to make money with it so yeah. i think they're less inclined to either day trade it or dump it or or there's more there's just kind of more general buy pressure than there would have been uh without those things but yeah i do agree that you know people say oh this is coming up so people are going to be buying for it but if it's if it's already known that something's coming up you know they always say that everything you know, everything is priced in already. So people aren't, you know, it's not like it's new news that all of a sudden they'll wake up and, oh, it's ready. Okay, now I can buy. You know, people know something's coming and they're excited about it. They're going to have already bought, you know, they would have bought when the Icon 2.0 announcement first hit, um, you know, earlier this year, whenever whenever it was. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't, I can't remember if there was much of a price bump at that time. I think we were kind of in a bearish moment when that did happen. Um, could be misremembering. But nonetheless, yeah, I do agree that, 
unless something unless a news piece of news is actually new um and totally out of nowhere and totally good news uh i i just they usually don't do a whole lot for price and even when they do the price usually kind of settles back down a little bit so um that's that's just kind of you know i don't think you know it's, people see the price move a lot and they just immediately look for a reason why and sometimes it's just there's more buyers than sellers and sometimes there's more there's mm. more sellers than buyers yeah i think um yeah uh, it's it's a good hopefully i mean uh, at the end of the day this as well with the news from china and stuff but it looks like um the the banking system is going to get bailed out over there and um so we've seen this news broke yesterday so hence i believe as well with some announcements in america at the moment um we're seeing a bit of a rebound which is good to see but overall um before we move on to the news as well uh, i just realized something i I did want to quickly address one of the first things i always see when we put up a new episode is when's the ice snapshot that's this is a regular comment on on the channel um uh, just calling this out in case you're wondering why we haven't addressed it it hasn't been announced we don't know hence we don't talk about it um and i am guessing they will announce when it's going to happen like they have in the past especially with the ohm air drips and balance air drips and i'm sure this will be no different so um if you're wondering no there no one knows because there has been no date um will sicx be included yes that's what they have said have they confirmed it officially um nothing official yet but we're all waiting for news on that but um it is their goal to support these airdrops as part of um when ice comes out but we'll come to that later and even you know even ohm is trying to figure out a solution on how to make it work um but that's tricky because you know i was in their discord and the you know david said like look we don't we don't even know the details of the snapshot for all we know you know it probably could have happened already i don't know i feel like they i feel like i heard i thought i explicitly saw icon say you know it'd be announced but maybe i'm misremembering but nonetheless um you know they don't know exactly how the airdrops even kind of be set up so there's still a lot of unknowns on that hopefully we do get some um snapshot information pretty soon here uh, just so people kind of feel, you know, get get a little less restless on the question. Uh, but yeah, we're the amount of the information we have right now is basically there will, will be a snapshot uh, at some point in time, and it'll lead to ice. But that's basically the extent of the the knowledge that we we have, and we meeting the entire icon community essentially. Hmm. Yep. Okay, yeah, look, I didn't mean to drop that in, but it, it just clicked as soon as we start. I was like, this is always the first comment that comes in, and it's like, well, let's address it really up front. And rest assured, when this news drops, we will put it at the start of the podcast so that everyone hears it right at the start and doesn't have to wait an hour when we're going to get to it. But, um, yeah, we, we don't know yet. And, um, uh, look, honestly, man, I don't think... Um, I just don't see it... Uh, they may uh, it being a retro capture like it's such a opportunity right to create a bit of um hype around it maybe they'll reward uh, as a retro snapshot who knows maybe they do a bit of a bonus reward as a retro thing and but yeah uh, i'm honestly i'm just speculating and talking crap i think um it they yeah. will announce i mean i think today. i think i think too, it'd be smarter just to kind of give you know because there is so much money in ohm and you know to to not really be helpful in terms of kind of explaining you know giving a heads up you know if it was retroactive and ohm wasn't set up to kind of capture that data because ohm's a lot more confusing because you know people are both supplying and borrowing and then supplying with their borrow and all that other stuff uh where i think you know the foundation being not retroactive i think makes the most sense and again i feel like i i feel like i saw it somewhere that they would they would be forward looking and they'd be announced um but nonetheless again minor de- yeah most of the details we don't have yeah yeah okay well let's jump into the news uh, what have we got first First up? Uh, so we did get a little bit of an update on the Icon 2.0 migration. Um, basically, the foundation put out a tweet. I'll just read it as it is. Uh, two weeks since completing block import testing ahead of Icon 2.0 mainnet launch, Icon developers are now in the process of preparing for the hard fork itself. The first part of that was upgrading the C Jong testnet, and which despite some delays and bug fixes, went smoothly overall. So, you know, Sounds sounds like a lot. Really, not a huge bit of news here. Uh, but you know, the quick summary is essentially things are mostly moving along schedule. There haven't really been any issues. You know, obviously you kind of expect some little hiccups here and there when you're doing this sort of stuff, uh, but nothing to the extent that it really threw off their their overall schedule. Uh, so everything seems to be moving along as we had hoped. Um, I, we don't obviously don't have an exact date of when the true launch will be. Uh, I did see someone. You know, there were a, a couple of questions about. You know, they saw the word fork and they kind of 
thought, okay, do I need to swap tokens or whatever? Um, it, it is a hard fork uh, in the technical sense of things, but from a user standpoint, uh, you really won't notice a thing. You know, all your tokens will be the same. They're just kind of getting moved over to, from it technically, it technically being moved from one chain to another, but it's just from icon 1.0 to icon 2.0. So don't don't let the word hard fork freak you out and make you think you have to, you know, go swap tokens or anything like that. Uh, that's just the technical terminology that is essentially what is happening. Um, so uh, nonetheless, piece of good news, you know, things are still on track. I know we're all very excited about icon 2.0, uh, especially because of what the what the additional doors that opens will be. Um, um, so good to, good to get that update though. Yep, look, uh, I hope now we can get a bit of a timeline. I guess that's that's all I'm kind of now waiting for. If, if we're so far along, we should get a bit of an estimate to say what, what, what kind of steps are left before we um, land on a date. Let's hope that news comes out soon. I found this update. I mean, yeah, the GIF is very cool, but um, <laughs> I don't know. It felt a little lacking, but it, it also at the same time uh, confirms, um, you know, that that testnet was a big thing and they're saying everything's gone smoothly. That's a good sign. So let's hope we get a date soon. Um, it's it's due now. Okay. Um, migration, USDS is the next one. What have we got here, I can go for? Uh, so we're at uh, a total market capitalization of 7 million USDS. Uh, so basically, you know, 7 million USDS has been uh, minted, created, generated, whatever you would call it. That's about, what, over a little less than a month, I think. Um, so certainly um, pretty, you know, a pretty good amount of money has flowed in uh via that and generated you know all this all this stable coin uh pretty much i think the main the main reason was you know the yields that usds is getting on ohm um are pretty pretty good compared to the other opportunities so that's where most of the demand is coming from um but certainly um uh, something nice to see yeah it was great great announcement um great to see especially um we know this this is from users right it's um that's what's cool about it um, let's hope now we see the other 7 million happen in half the time and it just keeps doing what I guess that DeFi market cap has done, right? That first billion came in a year and a half, the sec second billion came in uh, six months, the third billion in two months, and then it just went nuts. <laughs> yep. so, um, and there, yeah, and there was, you know, we do want to point out there was a bit of an issue with USDS, uh, was it a few days ago, I think, maybe over the weekend? Basically, it gets a little confusing, but you know, so USDS has its own uh, contract that operates on the ICX network. Um, it's being paid for with the step fees, which are kind of difficult to explain, but essentially uh, what happened is there was a kind of a, an issue on their end um, where they kind of miscalibrated on when they would need to kind of top up their account with ICX in order to make sure the fees for that contract were paid. And so what happened was there was a point of time where USDS was essentially uh, frozen to where people couldn't transfer it, supply it, borrow it, whatever, uh, on the network just because the contract was essentially, you know, it's, it's sort of like if you try to make a transaction but you don't have any ICX in your account, uh, it's not going to let you. That's basically kind of what happened here. So um, it was it, certainly frustrating for a lot of people. You know, there's concern, you know, had, had ICX had the price, you know, dropped during that time period by a significant amount, there's could have been people who might have been liquidated because they couldn't you know, top up their collateral with USDS or something like that. Um, it did, you know, the, they did, it did seem like a problem that was kind of a, certainly one that probably won't happen again, just because it was kind of a, a bit of a fluke incident. Uh, but nonetheless, something that certainly we wanted to point out just because it did happen, uh, certainly kind of grew, drew some uh, concern for people. It probably lasted, what, a few hours, I think, uh, mm -hmm. is what I remember, um, until it got resolved. Um, but uh, we haven't gotten anything from, we haven't got like a kind of an after action report or anything like that from Stably, so maybe that's something we will get. Uh, but nonetheless, everything's everything's working fine now. Uh, no big deal, and all the you know all the funds are all the funds are safe. Uh, they were just stuck for a little bit there uh, a few days ago. Yeah, um, I, I agree. And look, uh, this one was close to heart for me because I was trying to run around and get in touch with someone who could help. Um, you know, uh, Scott has to sleep at some time, so <laughs> um, this I was literally pinging everyone. So for me, it was an eye opener to go. You know, I I really hope 
um, some steps are put into place to enable um, when issues like this happen, there's someone, you know, that, that is there to manage those aspects um, that we can reach out to, which I feel was a missing, missing point. Um, and luckily nothing did happen. Otherwise, there would be um, quite a lot to deal with. But um, overall, uh, let, let's hope, I agree with the icon graphic, let's hope stably or someone, just someone, and if, if someone from the foundation or an ICX station or someone actually listened to this podcast, they, they listen to this and go, yep, we really should do a bit of an update as to what transpired and what steps we put in place to make sure this never happens again. Um, uh, that's what I'd like to see. I mean, the, these are this is our money that is in these protocols. And you can we can say one thing, smart contract risk. Yep, totally understand that. But the, on this side, it wasn't smart contract risk. It was there was an issue, and how do we get the right support to to um, remedy the issue, and at the same time keep the community updated as to what the issue is and what the timeline is to get resolved. Similar to what we saw when Balanced had that issue um, a while back, and you know Scott was brilliant. Oh, he was on Twitter. He was thing. He was constantly updating the community, and that issue went on for a day or two. But um, uh, the updates were relentless. Uh, in this case, um, there were no updates and then it got resolved, but then it seemed to have been forgotten about. So um, just, just calling it out. Yep, we know it happened and, and hopefully uh, something is, is done to revise a little bit of any issues like that for the future. Um, but USDS success, yep, let's not let's not uh, end it on a negative note. That did happen, but at the end of the day, it's still going strong and um, it's still giving you a decent amount of interest on Ohm um, for the moment, which is a great way to earn interest. Okay, next up. Uh, so, yeah, we have our, our weekly kind of uh, balanced update, a bit more of a mini update this time. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to a series or... I don't know if it's a series necessarily, but nonetheless, a, a topic uh, regarding um, how to create bots to use with Balanced uh, that you can create on your own, and uh, it's part of the part of the Balanced for Developers series uh, by our own uh, Brian uh, Brian Lee, who is with uh, the Rhizome team. Uh, basically, it is a art, you know, it's a helpful kind of guide uh, to learn how to set up a Python environment, and you can interact with the loans contract, and that way it'll it'll alert you basically if you're collateral ratio falls below uh, 200% in this case. Pretty, I mean, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, looking over it, I felt that I have some development experience, so I wasn't sure if it's, you know, I kind of understood a good chunk of it. I think it's it's set up for someone who's basically a beginner. Um, you might need some really, you know, low level programming kind of understanding language, but I think it's kind of geared towards someone who might not be able to do anything at all uh, to hopefully kind of get set up and running, um, being able to use uh, the terminal in order to interact with the with the smart contracts and things like that. So, at the very least, if you're interested in it, I would certainly check it out, uh, take a look at it, um, and see if it's something you might be interested in. And you know, I don't think anything can go too horribly wrong if you can't quite figure it out. There might be a couple of things you have to Google um, just as a secondary source to kind of learn something. Uh, but nonetheless, it's written in a pretty pretty easy to understand manner. Uh, it's you know it displays really well. Uh, it's on the balanced website so uh and certainly i would certainly give it a shot uh give it a shot if you're a developer or interested in kind of playing around with the balanced uh, ecosystem uh, a bit more yeah um brian just uh, got his hands in so many things it's this is this is fantastic um just love everything he's doing um uh yeah definitely and it's on the balanced blog which which is which is quite nice to just scroll through <laughs> it's they really nail the ui and we wouldn't expect anything less from um, lisa and peter so yeah great call out um we also have i believe i didn't bring this up apologies but uh we have two proposals that are being voted on um yeah one is to distribute the balance net and we've covered this in the last uh, weeks but the, it's now officially live uh one of them is, you know, moving all the other tokens into um, Balance, BNUSD, and I SICX. Okay, so we've landed on the three. Um, and then all the other fees, for example, you know, the OM, and we have got uh, all the other assets that are currently on, on Balance. They will just get sold and um, BN, uh, Balance will be bought instead. So this is up for vote. Um, 
it's already 91% of voted yes. And why wouldn't you? This is indirectly constantly creating buy pressure for balance. Um, and, and you know, in, in that future that we've talked about with BTP, uh, honestly, I, I can't imagine 100 different assets, random fees. It's just completely ridiculous. So this is a great solution. Um, I can graph your thoughts. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, just in terms of devil's advocate, I can imagine there might be some people voting no just because, you know, it does kind of nice provide a nice little diversified portfolio every morning of kind of a, a various basket of goods. So maybe there might be some folks out there who kind of appreciate having, you know, a little bit of OMM, uh, you know, a little bit of USDS, IUSDC. Um, i trying to if there's any others that come along. But uh, obviously you can obviously, you know, if you decide to, you can always sell and, you know, do it on your own manually. Uh, but I just feel like there, there might have been some people who were comfortable and then kind of enjoyed just getting a, mu- a multitude of tokens that they could feel like they were kind of diversified or uh, however else you want to say it. So that's that's why I would think that people would vote no. But I think ultimately, um, ultimately it's a good solution. Obviously, clearly there's a uh, lot of lot of support for it uh, with 91%. There's also uh, BIP7, uh, which is to basically adjust the rebuilding threshold uh to 3% as opposed to 5%. So right now you you might have noticed from time to time you know it's possible to essentially uh if you can sell IUSDC for BNUSD and basically get, you know, a dollar 5 BNUSD. The inverse of that is, you know, if you want to buy IUSDC, sometimes it can cost uh uh you know, it it requires um more BNUSD to to buy to get IUSDC. So you're basically trading more one stable coin for less of another, which is not necessarily optimal. Um, so this basically helps maintain the peg a bit better uh, at only 3%. Um, the downside, you know, obviously that's better because it's close to culture dollar. The downside is it'll probably impact uh, rebalancing a bit more, uh, which I know some people, you know, aren't super, super favorable of. Um, I know they did the update to help kind of smooth that out. And there are some other kind of ways you can, uh, mitigate the impact of rebalancing uh but that is the kind of the trade-off that's being made um nonetheless there is a currently 96.7 percent yes uh for that one so i assume that one will likely pass as well um unless that changes dramatically um since i last looked at it yep look that i mean the tightening up the peg that's a good one it needs to happen the rebalancing of I have views on that, but um, that's not. <laughs> but uh, look, yep, yeah, it, it's great. Both these proposals are looking to go through, so um, I'm particularly excited about the swapping balance. I, I get it; like, it's good having all these other fees. But uh, look at it this way: if if putting constant buy pressure on balance makes that price go up, you can then kind of take those profits and buy those tidbits that you get in fees the other way around so yep but it also it also sounds like it'll it's a little easier on the uh on the infrastructure as well to do to do this i think scott was saying that it's a little makes it makes it a little more efficient from a processing standpoint uh so that's certainly good as well yeah yeah um so on the on the next topic uh we have a couple new p reps uh, which is nice to see one of them is called uh protocol seven protocol spelled with a k uh, basically, full full stack blockchain development team, um, and they are help you know they're helping on the front end with the with Ohm Finance, uh, or you know Ohm as we call it. Uh, so basically, nice to see them come along. We also have another one called Darkseer, uh, which helped work on balanced front ends along with Parrot Nine, um, and uh, they are also uh, be, they, it looks like they're into DeFi, also becoming a P rep. Um, so it's certainly nice to see, you know, it's always good to see more. We know, we know builders and developers are coming onto icon more and more just because anecdotal, we just kind of pick it up here and there. Um, but nice to see them kind of become P reps. Um, and you know, it's kind of P reps kind of were, there's kind of a, I don't know if it was an explicit move, but basically the way the new tokenomic system is set up, it's more for, you know, builders are kind of theoretically, they'll get funding through CPS, um, and then kind of more just other, just people who want to just operate nodes or be kind of maybe more part of the community or whatever would do the peer rep portion of things. But from their standpoint, I can understand, you know, what I, what I, what I guess is optimistic about this is the fact that they're taking the steps of setting up the infrastructure to become peer ups, taking on some of the costs to be peer ups. Obviously there's compensation there, uh, but looking forward, it's not going to be as significant as it had been over the last couple of years, as far as icon is concerned. Um, so, you know, I think they're, if I were from their perspective and what I assume to be, if, 
they plan on kind of sticking around and building out a lot of cool stuff on icon um you know they would want to have a voice over the governance of icon because theoretically you know if they if they're putting time and effort and resources into building a product um whether it's balance or ohm or potentially something else down the line um they're obviously going to want uh, i can understand wanting to make sure that you have a voice in the governance of the network and that the network's moving in the right direction otherwise you know if you build something and all of a sudden the network turn could turn for the worse and you felt like it was taking a making it a, a governance decision that was not in the best interest then it was sort of kind of almost destroy your work or certainly make it uh kind of a wasted effort so from that per like i can understand why we why, why we would see developers becoming p reps um uh, even though there's funding through uh cps and potentially other mechanisms as well yeah look and i think um I actually asked this question to Icon Graphic because in my head when I was seeing these announcements it didn't add up. It, it It's great we've got these teams um, jumping on board and helping but that's why Balance and Oma DAOs, right? And they got the worker tokens, this is how they reward. So now they're jumping on as pirates and capitalizing that to me didn't add up. Um, however, uh, as Icon Graphic just mentioned, uh, of course it adds up because at the end of the day um if they they're spending their harder uh, uh their time and effort in in protocols in the ecosystem they would as well want to have an overall vote in the way the icon chain itself evolves and while we haven't seen much of that lately because everything is waiting for icon 2.0 and the changes will just be put in but then um we, we we will see a lot of um network votes come into play what i'm hoping i hope that's what transpires um and essentially if if the model isn't working readjustments to to things like that and these teams would want to have their say because they're spending their time and effort so um uh, overall, as as I've had that conversation with Icon Graffer, thank you. I've reflected and felt, yep, yeah, it's great to see. It's still, we're going to have our builders being P reps, but the difference here is if they're going to create new projects, they're going to go to um, CPS or uh, their particular projects, if they're working on Balanced and Ohm, go to those DAOs and ask for money for whatever they're going to build. Um, they're not just because they're p-rep it doesn't mean that they're going to be building based on p-rep um rewards because that's changing substantially as we know um yeah that's a and, good one yeah and uh you know i kind of this is something that brian has expressed in the past too from rhizome basically you know he, he's always he's always appreciative and, and looking for more votes for rhizome not necessarily because you know obviously there is a there is a correlation obviously between the votes and the amount of compensation that teams get via the the reward the block rewards for being a peer up but he, he, from his standpoint he wants to make sure that you know rhizome continues to be able to have a strong voice uh in the icon ecosystem moving forward too so that's certainly a, a philosophical approach that um you know rhizome rhizome has as well as far as kind of our our role as a peer up uh and why we're still hopeful that people are willing to support us um with with their votes and delegations and all that other good stuff so just something something else to keep in mind um moving along to uh craft so there's a new there's kind of the first governance proposal put forward by craft now the token isn't necessarily but it has not been distributed yet so this is a bit of a roundabout way of conducting a vote they're essentially conducting it on uh icon.vote uh which allows you kind of to vote on chain uh for different proposals things like that but essentially the problem that has arisen is based on the tokenomics of the CFT token, uh, which is allocated based on someone's buy slash sell volume uh, relative to the buy slash sell volume of the entire platform in a given week. Uh, there are people out there who are basically, you know, wash trading NFTs. So they'll just have two wallets that just back and forth, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy. Um, so, you know, say there's a, th there's an NFT at thousand dollars. It just, goes back and forth back and forth so you do that you know 50 times all of a sudden it looks like you've done fifty thousand dollars of sell volume fifty thousand dollars of uh, buy volume i guess fifty thousand icx in this case um and so obviously that can help you mine cft so the question arose of basically you know is this something where we want to prevent it um or is it something we should just kind of let happen because uh you know for potentially several reasons uh, but essentially the, the kind of, so the three choices essentially is, you know, yeah, just let it happen. Uh, the fees that, that these generate will help, you know, the Dow and the CFT truck price, because, um, you know, down the road, CFT holders can benefit from the network fees similar to balanced. Um, 
the kind of second choice is retroactively exclude addresses for the explicit and deliberate watch trading activity from CFT liquidity mining rewards and exclude these volumes in the future. So basically saying, you know, if you did in the past, if you did in the future, uh, you know, we're not going to, you're not going to be included in the CFT allocation. And then the third choice is basically, um, you know, if it happened in the past, you know, there was no warning about it, so it's fine. But moving forward, uh, those addresses will be excluded. So uh, last I checked, the middle option was winning. Basically, you know, whether it was in the past or in the future, wash trading will be disqualified from the CFT token allocation. Um, so it looks like that's the way things are going. Um, obviously, it's still a little bit early in the voting process. Um, but uh, nonetheless, that's where things are. So uh, interesting, uh, interesting initial kind of dynamic at play here. Um, interested to see kind of how it all plays out, especially in terms of how wash trading is defined. Uh, but obviously, um, something that there was enough concern from the community about to not only generate a proposal, but to also, uh, you know, get a lot of support for doing something. Yeah, I uh, I don't have too much of a view on this one. I figured this was happening. Um, uh, I find it interesting, the forum that's being used for votes like these. Um, but I, I guess for you to actually vote, you need to sign in. And part of the sign in from memory, it requires a wallet address, which is cool. Um, yeah, and they, they're, they're no. So they'll look at the wallet address and see how much CFT you're currently due. Um, and it'll help, ah. um, you know, because it's, it's it's weighted by your CFT, which is it, it, it very closely mimics what the governance process will actually look like. Um, but because CFT hasn't actually been allocated yet, there's no, um, you know, they can't they can't officially do it that way. So they're getting as close to possible as, as um, being as representative as possible as far as what the governance weight of each person would be. Okay, yeah, that, that's quite cool. Yeah, I didn't realize they were doing it that way. But um, yeah, I, I figured this trading was happening. Honestly, I straight away thought about it. Well, what's stopping me from just moving NFT and, and you know, banking losses in resale um, based on, you know, fees that get paid to the platform. But overall, uh, you know, getting a ton of craft token and capturing that when it launches. Uh, so I didn't even realize this was a bit of a hot topic in the community. Uh, shows how I had a yeah, touch on it. I'm interested if it actually is profitable because, you know, we don't, right at this point, we don't have a price for CFT tokens, right? And keep in mind with every transaction, a fee gets paid to exactly uh, the platform, right? So if, if, say, the CFT token comes out and it's, I don't know, less than a penny or something like that. Well, it's not a penny. Right. But, it, but it, th there is a point in, at, theoretically where uh, the, the fees you would have paid in order to watch trade are more than the value of the CFT you might have earned. Um, we don't know that for sure. It's it's kind of an open question, but that's just one of those things where it is it is a bit of a risk to have done it uh, during the early stages. But nonetheless, uh, yeah, I always felt that it was kind of a. Yeah, I think even from day one, it was kind of like, what's to stop someone from just opening two walls and then just sending stuff back and forth to each other? Um, so nonetheless, uh, I think it'll be a different difficult problem to necessarily nail down and solve. Uh, but clearly, I think that I think the community gets that and is willing to kind of. Uh, work work to find a solution that works best just because they felt that it was uh, the status quo was not uh, acceptable to them so totally understand that mm. yeah I agree so good to see the community well 59 votes so voters so hmm is that a lot um, yeah I think it's still uh, I think it's still on the first or second day um, nine hours so, left it says so so get in there so what i'm trying to get at if if you i mean there's a big craft community and if you care about this this is your time to have a say don't think uh, iconographer did a great job explaining it um i wasn't aware that that's how the voltage counted um so if you have a large stash you you it is very important sign in with that wallet and have your say um so that the you know team can make changes based on what the community has been vocal about yeah that's a good one. What do we got next? Um, so, uh, one, so I guess just a few hours before we recorded this, uh, I put out an article basically talking about, uh, I, I wrote one um, after ICE was first announced, the ICE blockchain, uh, kind of explaining what, you know, philosophically, why this, why this was something that was going to get done. Uh, why it kind of made sense, why, you know, why, why Icon was kind of trying to specialize on Icon being the BTP chain and ICE being the, the DAP chain. Um, so it's kind of a, a I don't say a follow up, but uh, I wanted to do a bit more thinking on ICE itself. You know, I think the one thing everyone's excited for ICE, 
but they're excited for ice because they see airdrop and i think i've uh, the number of people who want to just sell their token their tokens as soon as they get them is kind of free money uh, which i totally you know that's 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 their right i'm not giving financial advice one way or another but i think they're kind of um you know that that's where they're that's where they're thinking about ice kind of stops uh, at least in the short term um and so I, I wanted to kind of give a bit more perspective on why it's just not necessarily just another blockchain um and you know i i think the the key part of it is the evm compatibility ethereum virtual machine um and what this again what what is what what the icon announcement discussed and what my other article discussed essentially as a reminder though it is you know you have acts it's almost like your blockchain's kind of copied copied and pasted of ethereum uh, meaning the code's very similar, um, the the tools that you have access to for like, in terms of MetaMask and other things like that, they're all the same. So it's sort of a it's a very uh, compatible blockchain with Ethereum. And what you know you've seen this a lot with other chains that have sprung up um, over the last few months, couple of years. Uh, Phantom being one of them, um, Avalanche being another one of them, uh, Harmony being one, Binance Smart Chain probably the most I think definitely the biggest as far as market cap is concerned, but probably the one that's gotten the most attention. Um, and a few others as well, uh, and a Polygon, another one uh, that's gotten a lot of attention. And so these, you know, these really caught fire because it it provided users with access to a lot of what Ethereum had to offer, um, but without having to pay the significant gas fees and other things like that, um, and faster transactions, all that other good stuff. So it was it was almost like a better version of Ethereum while still getting access to kind of the the, the underlying Ethereum benefits as well, I guess, if that kind of makes sense. So, you know, we're, there's there's not too many of these, you know, there's a handful, um, but, we're, I, you know, ICE is essentially going to join that little group of, of chains that are very, very compatible with Ethereum, very easy to very quickly take a, take a product that's running on Ethereum, deploy it on ICE, uh, get something running, you know, you could take basically Aave and within a very short period of time have essentially the same thing running on ICE, uh, or and you can very quickly improve upon it. You know, if there's things that you think Ave isn't doing well or could do better. Uh, it's very easy to take Ave and then tweak it and, and adjust things and things like that. And that's why you've been able to see some of these other chains, um, you know, pretty quickly build up a nice little base of DeFi applications and other things like that. So, you know, we have that. That that's a clear advantage of of having that access and things like that. Um, there is also it is. Uh, utilizing substrate um which i won't take a whole lot of time on essentially it, it's a blockchain framework that makes it way easier to block build a blockchain than just building from scratch uh it was it was the company who built it and developed it was founded by gavin wood who was one of the original ethereum founders and uh developers and i'm sure you've probably heard his name he's also the, the creator of polka dot um or the main main person behind polka dot um so he has a lot of notoriety and um, Polkadot also runs on Substrate. But what I guess the, the, the point of it is it, it allows a blockchain to get up and running a lot quicker than it might have been the olden days. You know, remember back in the ICO days, teams had to raise millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in order to fund blockchain development because everything had to be built from scratch. Whereas this more is, is, is much more of an out of the box kind of plug and play um, way to build a blockchain. There's, there's even a video that I included there of, of Gavin Wood essentially building a blockchain in under 60 minutes. Um, so it just kind of shows how, how quickly and helpful it makes things. It also makes it easier uh, to quickly integrate with the Polkadot ecosystem, again, because they're both written uh, utilizing Substrate. So we have that also with BTP, uh, but nonetheless, it's, that's another nice advantage. And then, you know, I think what's most important is, you know, I, I mentioned those other chains that came along, you know, Phantom and, and Avalanche and stuff. And those, you know, they essentially had to build from scratch, right? Obviously, they did token sales and, and got in some users that way by people who thought they were going to do well in the future. Whereas, you know, ICE is by no means started from scratch. It's essentially, and it, it gets to inherit the entire user base and developer base of another existing chain, that other existing chain being um, Icon, of course, right? You're going to have immediately from day one, um, thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of token holders who know about the chain um, are potentially eager to use the chain, um, have capital to deploy. So, you know, if you're, if you're a developer and you're kind of saying, all right, you know, whether you can, maybe you've been building an icon, um, maybe you're looking, maybe you haven't been building an icon, but are, um, you know, an Ethereum developer looking for somewhere to go uh, and knowing that, hey, if I, if I build a new DeFi dApp on this platform, on this blockchain, um, there are already hundreds of thousands of, of token holders and, and users who are basically ready to go and eager to deploy their capital uh, into my DeFi application. 
um, that's gonna that's a very incredible incentive um, for developers to potentially do that. And and the outcome potentially is you know if within a within a short period of time, <coughs> some of these um, applications get spun up, and people have either a bunch of ICX or a bunch of ICE or a bunch of both. And with BTP, they want to move uh, their ICX over to ICE, and they already have their ICE over there. You know, there could be potentially hundreds of millions of dollars in total value locked uh, from very early days on this new blockchain. And I think it's one of those things where that can capture headlines where it says, you know, brand new blockchain already has, you know, 300 million in total value locked in their DeFi. Um, that's going to raise some eyebrows and, and draw some more attention. And, and ide- you know, ideally, potentially ICE gets kind of brought into this hype cycle that's been around some of these other uh, EBM layer one uh, compatible chains, like like the Phantom, like Avalanche, um, things like that. So, um, and hopefully, you know, one of the key things we've seen recently is like Avalanche and Phantom. They had the, they're running these, you know, huge incentive programs for liquidity mining, um, or providing providing liquidity and essentially saying, you know, if, if a developer, there's a pool of like $300 million that Phantom has, um, that if a developer can generate, you know, $10 million worth of liquidity on their platform, that they'll be entitled to a large share or a chunk of that $350 million. Obviously that's, a, you know, that's a, that's a good way to get developers really working and hungry and, and building on your platform and trying to recruit users. Avalanche had something similar for liquidity mining um, for users. Uh, and then, and, and so, you know, 20, I think it was 25%, uh, is your 20 or 25% of the, uh, will be an additional supply of ICE tokens relative to what uh, ICX is. And with that allocation being utilized for incentives for core contributors. Now, I don't know quite know what that is. I'm hopeful that maybe they'll try to do something kind of like what those other platforms are doing, because once those incentives got announced, A, the, those tokens got really hot uh, from a price standpoint, which I know isn't everything, but it just goes, you know, the market, the market liked that news. Um, and also, you know, uh, you've kind of seen more and more activity kind of pick up. It, it's still relatively recent that they got announced, but nonetheless, it's been, it's been a positive development one way or another. And you can obviously see, you know, as these chains all kind of become more and more competitive with one, each, one of one of each other um, and they're all, have similar f- features, you know, they're all really fast, they're all really secure, they're all EVM compatible. Um, it, they have to do more and more to kind of differentiate themselves. So, you know, I think if you can use funds to lure developers and lure users and lure liquidity, uh, more power to you. And I think that's a good, that's a good approach. So hopefully ICE utilizes some of the funds that uh, come from that, you know, that allocation in order to do that. And of course we also have CPS as well, which is a further incentive for developers to come build because they can get funding if they need it. That's something, you know, certainly nothing, nothing too novel um, as far as kind of grants and things like that. Pretty much every major blockchain has done some version of that. And obviously we've been doing it for a while, Uh, but nonetheless, everything is, you know, I think lining up to make a pretty impressive um, um, setup uh, for for ICE, you know, I think everything's setting to be bullish. I uh, look at what other chains that have been doing well over the last few months have done, and and ICE certainly checks all those boxes. So I think there's a lot of reasons to be excited for ICE beyond just the airdrop, um, and I hope people will be more thoughtful about that um, and you know be a bit more deliberative as far as what they want to necessarily do with their ICE tokens, uh, knowing all that. So yeah, that that's great. I love the article as always, um, Icon Graffer. Uh, I, I'm going to play devil's advocate here, put you on the spot, Icon Graffer. Just um, so why at the start? What incentive is there to build on ice? Why should I port Arve onto ice? Um, I mean, you have potentially you, you, a you'll have I don't know certainly hundreds of potentially hundreds of millions of dollars of capital that can be deployed uh, from, um, you know, so say, say you want to build something, uh, say you're a developer, I want to build something. uh, Okay. uh, uh, I can't build on Ethereum because, you know, I would, I would just kind of get overshadowed by all these established, established DeFi products. Um, Oh yeah. Same, same kind of with phantom. They, you know, the other, you know, spooky swap and, and, Others have already kind of picked up a lot of momentum, but oh, there's this new chain over here. But I don't know if they have any users, so I don't know if I want to build there. Oh, here's one where there's already you know a bunch of potential users ready to go. I can I can easily 
build a version of Aave or some other DeFi product uh, pretty easily, pretty quickly, because I'm already familiar with with Solidity and uh, you know, which is the code that Ethereum essentially runs on. Uh, and there's a bunch of capital in the form of ICE that has nowhere to go at the moment. Um, I guess they could theoretically there could be some on Balanced or Ohm, um, but people there, there's a bunch of capital that's ready to be deployed and ready to be utilized on new projects and things like that. So you know when you when you can kind of combine those different aspects of it, um, I think there'd be some that would be certainly interested in, in having that opportunity, um, just because you know again it's not like it's not like there's hardly anyone on Icon or anything like that. Certainly it's not Ethereum, uh, but if you look at the, kind of the playbook that some of these other chains have run, you know they they were able to basically start from scratch. Obviously their big key key draw was you know having. The Ethereum upside without either the Ethereum downside as far as the the high gas fees and the slower transactions and everything like that. Uh, but I obviously I said that as well. So you know if I was a developer and I was looking for somewhere to build, um, you know I think obviously stuff still getting built on Ethereum. But in terms of where to potentially do something that's going to generate a lot of transactions and obviously if you're the upside being you know you'll be as a team member you get a lot of your own tokens and if those tokens are valuable because your platform is being used a lot with a lot of capital, then there, there's your upside. So mm. that's that's how I would look at it if I was one of those people. Yeah, no, cool. Um, I, I think, and to add on to that, like uh, one thing we come back to, it's just uh, f- in Icon, we do have a lot of people building. Um, and, and, you know, uh, just to call out, I interviewed... Uh, icon dow and it will drop next week and you know they have a team of uh, close to 50 devs across different countries now they're all building and building stuff for icon and you know one of the things to while yes we can attract everything for but it also enables our key builders all of a sudden to kind of go well we can build something on ice we can strip the code from here and something that it's going to take us a year we can deliver in three months now um so just on that front itself and and uh, mark my words like literally the days of building dApps on icon will be numbered but strategically so because uh, you know and they've already said it they want it to be the aggregator chain they essentially every transaction should be freed up so that you know it's registering whatever transaction for btp is required so we'll see more of that and we'll see it pivot to um to ice and hopefully a lot of our builders and there's a lot um can actually pump out oh, i shouldn't say pump out you want it to be good stuff but um kind of get a lot of things deployed on ice and naturally it's got a user base because iconists will just migrate to ice they're going to follow anything icon does um and all of a sudden um that should that should as well do everything icon graph just said attract people eyes oh my god ice has already got this liquidity i could take my protocol there and and get some of that um that community involved that currently isn't in this ecosystem so yeah um lots of options didn't mean to put you on the spot there icon graph but i felt it's it's probably a burning question everyone asks um and well yeah and i I forgot to mention this both in my monologue, but also in my answer is that, you know, we also have BTP, right? Where ICE will be outside, the, you know, out of the box, BTP ready, obviously can integrate with ICON, uh, but also the upside that brings. Now, obviously down the line, we expect BTP to basically be, you know, running through everything um, to where, you know, any chain ideally will have um, BTP access. But at least from the early days, you know that ICE is going to be able to give you uh, quick access to either, you know, BSC or Near or Harmony uh, or Polkadot, um, so for just based on the <clears throat> based on BTP, which again, from a capital standpoint, uh, should be impressive as far as uh, developers are concerned. Yep. Great. Uh, do we have anything else I can grab for? I think that's it. No, it's been a bit of a, bit of a slower news week this week, um, for the most part, which sometimes happens. Um, I mean, I think there, there's still there's still much uh, much faster news weeks than I think when we first started, uh, but uh, nonetheless, that does does happen from time to time. Uh, um, but we are getting closer to Icon 2.0, so hopefully we'll have more substantive news on that soon. And you know, within the next I don't know, hopefully month, we'll be talking about how awesome Icon 2.0 is. Yep, I agree. Look, uh, one thing, make sure if you haven't already, we released a Gangster Bet interview with the team um, this week. So if you wanted to know a lot more about how it came about, some of the stuff they got on the roadmap, which is listed on, on the website, but definitely their uh, backstory is great. I, I enjoyed um, hearing um, 
how it came to be and especially like a who who said you know who's had a very large um, influence in collecting cards when he was younger and, and just saw the nft play out market play out that way and how he joined forces with brendan and and they worked together um it's it's a great story and um it's really what i loved about it was you know in their eyes they took a long time to get this running and when i asked them at the end how long from start to finish they said six months now uh, keep in mind that this is a cps funded project and they turned it uh, to me that is brilliant they've literally built this from scratch um so six months i don't know i felt that was next to nothing um so yeah a great great story great great information there definitely tune in um next week we'll have icon dow um i will have the optimus um tutorial drop for the optimus protocol uh, i have to make some revisions but um as well as the interview um will drop next early next week as well um and you can hear a lot of the cool things that icon dow are building doing and and mainly how optimus came about but um i just loved hearing from one of the devs uh, rise a community member as well um where he spoke about the future and off optimus and basically uh, how he hopes the protocol evolves and is and uh, how much they stress that they want it to grow community wise so literally they want community um, builders implementing strategies via optimus and they, they get rewarded for doing so so uh, i'm kind of um, it's definitely a great interview to to um uh, wait up for and and uh, very excited about the protocol as well it, it, it takes these yield aggregators and even just as you use it on testnet you'll see how simple it is to actually utilize the strategy in fact um one of the one of the points that um icon Graffer was talking about with brian about the bot um to keep the collateral ratio well uh, optimus one of the first strategies is a borrowing strategy that essentially does all of that for you um at the same time ensuring you get the maximum yield from balance token while you borrow so it keeps your ratio right bang before your rewards cut off and automatically adjust it based on price movements <laughs> brilliant so um you know lots of cool things with optimus to come so stay tuned for that but otherwise um that's all i have that's all i believe i can graph any closing words nope no nope. great look um i can't stress this enough uh this is uh, not make sure you do your own research we're not influencing you to buy uh you know even with the ice uh, airdrop uh, do your research know the facts doesn't mean after listening to this oh my god it's going to be crazy i got to go and buy all this icx we're not encouraging that we're not saying to do that but um these are the things on the horizon so we're just educating everyone and there are views basically so keep that in mind and last but not least you know like share i say this every week you know you get 500 views and i get uh, 15 likes the reason why these likes are important the more you like probably it'll get picked up by someone else who's just googled icon or on youtube and finds the show so those likes really help the algorithms bump up you know um the channel the show to get to more users so definitely we have a passionate community here so um if if you could help us out here and, and definitely hit that like button when you're listening to the podcast it would really help us but uh as always thank you for listening hopefully this was um worth the tune in and until next week we'll be back take care everyone see ya